When you have a data set, you probably want to know what is the most central value of that, because that is one of the um, parameters that describes the data set. And um, today we want to talk more or less about two and mention a third central value. And one of those you probably are probably familiar already with, that's the mean, but we also want to talk about median and shortly mention the modus, the mode, or in German it's the modus, um, but since there is no real use case for that in R, we concentrate on the firmer ones. So for doing that, the first thing I do is read the data set we have already uh, used several times, the Münzing data set, and we will, ah, and I have to set the correct working directory for that at first. And remove that part because I'm in the working directory. Okay, now we have it. Here's the Munzing data set, and we will talk about the length of the fibula later on. And additionally, I want to have a small play data set, so I call that play data, and I fill that with a vector which contains a one, the numbers from one to nine. Remember, with that, um, you can make a sequence of values and additionally uh, 100. So when we look at that you can see two ones then the number from 2 to 9 and then the 100. So the mean you probably remember from school or from daily life uh, the mean is the sum of all data of all play data which is quite a number divided by the length of this data set and with that we have the mean value of our data set which is 13 point something. Um, of course in R since that's the most common um, central tendency value there is a specific uh, command for that that's mean mean of our data set and when we do that, we get exactly the same number because R is calculating correctly and we also are calculating correctly. Um, we can also do the same for our real data set. That's the Münzingen data set. And we add this small dollar sign to specify a column in that data set. And I use the length column. So mean dollar length gives us 15 57 point something so that's the mean of the length that's the most central value of our data um, distribution when we have an, an a value in our data set um, mean behaves a bit strange in the first place so let's assume we have a data set which has the play data and also an, an a value in that which would result in this kind of data structure, so the play data before and then DNA. And when I run mean on that, I get an NA back. And this is kind of a warning sign or the reason you can't calculate actually something and mean of an NA value or several NA values. So the mean also will be NA. And if you just want to exclude the NAs and still calculate the mean, we have to add a um, parameter to the function that's r, uh, na dot rm equals to true. So na remove should be true. And with that, we get again our mean excluding DNA. And this na rm equals to true is um, a parameter that is usable in several other functions too. So that was the standard way of calculating something that's very central. But if we look our, to our data set here, um, or without DNA probably this data set here, um, the mean value of it is 13 point something. And if you look at the data themselves, most of the data are actually below 13 point something, while only this 100 here, this last and highest value, 
um, brings all these values to this quite high number of floating. And so you could think that the mean actually doesn't describe this data set very well because we have an outlier here and the mean is very sensitive to outliers. So whatever value is very high or very low strongly influences the mean of the whole data set. And to avoid that, there is a second um, central tendency value and that's called the median. The median is actually the most middle value of a data set. That sounds a bit strange. So let's look to our play data again. And they are already sorted, but if they would not be sorted, we have to would have to sort them. And when we do that, we get this time exactly the same range. But let's just for showing you that, let's sample from our play data, which mix them around. And when I again sort them for the sample data set, we then get the sorted values back. So we don't need the sampling here. We get our sorted data set. And when we look at them, the most central value, the, the most middle value, the median, is the value just right in the middle of them. So if we look at the length, length of our data set, we can see that's 11, it has 11 numbers. If I divide that by two, we can say that's 5.5. So five values, one, two, three, four, five, are um, left of the middle, five values are right of the middle, and the value here, which is responsible for this 0.5, that's the central value. And that's five, that's the median of our data set. Um, and this median actually, if we describes the whole data set kind of better because um, yeah, most of the data or half of the data are below five, half of the data are above high five. So um, it gives you a different view, a different perspective on the data set. And probably this is more likely really the middle value of the whole data set. But it depends on your purpose and on your assumption and scientific question what kind of middle, most middle value, most central value you would like to use. Um, so let's do that the same for our real data set. Um, Numsingen, dollar, uh, not fever machine, but length. And we look at the length of this data set here. We can see that it has 17 values and still it's also an odd number. If we remove the last one, we have 16 numbers and that's an even data set. So it looks like that. And if we sort that, we get the sorted values here. Um, and if we look at the length, uh, we did already look at the length of 16. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 values left and 8 values right of the middle value. But we have no middle value actually here. And in that case, the median is defined as being the mean of the two most central values. And if I take the mean value of the sorted um, array and take the eighth, eight to nine, so, and close the bracket, we get 48.5 as our median value. And of course, in R it has also median defined as command, median from Münzingen dollar length, and I also remove the last value here, and that's 48.5. And see, you don't have to put the sort in here because the median uh, command sorts the data set for you on its own. Okay, 
Um, so we can also visualize how the median and the mean are related to the whole data set. For example, we just plot the Munzingen length and we can see this kind of this distribution here. Um, if we sort that, we can see that the values are now rising in rising order. And um, I will change the plot a bit so that we can see um, the actually values on the y x uh, the, on the x axis and the index on the y axis by saying length of our Münzingen dollar length should be here. Now we can see here the values and the index is on the on the y-axis. And now I can add a line at the mean value. So add line where v should equal the vertical line should be at mean of Linsingen dollar length and can see here um, the mean. So more data are left of the mean than they are right of the mean. You can see that here are more points than left of that. And I can also plot the the median and I use another color for that. Color should equal to red. You can see that the median, the most central value, is left of our um, our mean value. So um, this already this describes you something about the structure and the distribution of the data set. So in that case, that is positively skewed because the median is left of the mean. And if we would plot the distribution of the data, we would see an um, uh, what is that um, strong slope in the density to the left and then a long tail to the right and if this is the other way around if the mean is smaller than the median then we have a negatively skewed data set if we have already something like the most central value um, the most middle value we can extend this concept probably a bit and that's um, what is called quartiles so we divide not only the data set into two equal sized number of, of cases, but we divide it so that we have one quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter of our data set as individual groups. And to do so, we use the, uh, the command quantile, which is actually the more general description for that. But in R, if we just use quantile on a data set, we get um, this quartile back. So we can see our smallest value is 26. The value that's 25% um, of all values, if we sort them, that's 44. Then the most central value here is 50. Remember, we get another different date than here because we removed the last one. Um, then 56 is at 75% and the biggest value is 128. And we can again plot that at line v equals to the quantiles, and I color that green. And we can see our median is now covered by, by one of the green lines, so that's the smallest, that's the biggest value. These are the first 25% of the values, then we have here the next 25, then the next 25 half of the values actually are located between these two bars and then we have the last uh, quartile of our data here in this range. And this gives you even more information about the shape of the distribution here. Um, when we have quartiles of course we can even extend that. For example have percentiles that means we take every 10% of the data as individual groups. 
Um, to do so, I add a sequence here from one from zero to one by zero point one. So I get every ten percent, and I plot that and color it blue. And now we have for every ten percent of the data here a line that describes um, yeah the number which would be at this ten percent. So we don't have actually a value here, for example, or here, but if this would be a continuous range, then there would be the value that would lie at 10, um, here 90 percent of all our data. Okay, that was it. Um, we have the mean, which is the most common and most often used value for describing this central tendency. We have the median that in certain cases is better suited because it's not so um, sensitive to outliers. And we have also um, the possibility to divide our data set into arbitrary um, amount of samples of, of cases. Most often you would see quartiles, so 25% of the data. You could also work with percentiles. Uh, this here is um, every 10%, but you can also divide that into every percent of the data and look where the values are lying. And with that, you can describe the structure of your data and the distribution of your data quite well. I mentioned that there is another <coughs> central tendency value, and that's the most common value. Um, this doesn't make so much sense in case of these um, measured values, but if we, for example, look at the um, what have you, Munzingen dollar Fibulaschine. If we look at them, um, if I make a table of them, I can see that B, we have 11 Bs, 4 As, and 2 Cs. And the most common value in that case would be B. And in case where we can't calculate um, I mean, this could also be uh, interpreted as ordinal values, but if this would just be nominal, we can't sort the values. That's why also a median doesn't make sense. We can't also sum them up because they are not numerical. So mean would also doesn't make any sense. But um, for these, we can just define the most central value as at that value that is most common, and that would be um, the mood of this data set. Um, it's not common use, but sometimes you might hear this, the mood of that. And in different cases, it also means the highest point in the peak of a distribution, but we'll see that later. Okay, now we have all the three central tendencies, mean, median, and mood. And that should be enough for today.